Olá, estou aqui esperando a chegada do Zerner Herzog, uma lenda viva do cinema, um dos cineastas que mais me inspirou e continua inspirando e que vai estar sentado ali daqui a pouco. three films in the last 12 months and I have excerpts of those and only uh, two days ago on Saturday I was filming uh, near Brasilia on my own. As you were talking about that, uh, yesterday when you arrived here in Porto Alegre we were talking about how easy it is uh, these days for you to travel, carry a portable camera, sound equipment and make films out of that do you want to talk us a little bit about that and how it changes the experience in filmmaking? Uh, well, filmmaking is always a complex sort of thing. Technically, it has become easier. We, we know that. But uh, uh, today we have, uh, I would say, three and a half million cell phones. 3,500 million cell phones. And each and every one with a cell phone can make a movie, and that wouldn't cost anything, any money at all. Um, and we have seen uh, credible films that were actually shot uh, on cell phones. I think uh, Soderbergh, I think Soderbergh has uh, made something uh, on a cell phone, and I have seen a film in theaters uh, by an American filmmaker, I forgot his name, the film is called Tangerine. Uh, has, has anybody heard of Tangerine here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not my kind of subject I go wild for, but uh, the film is really made by an intelligent, real filmmaker. And I, I, was, I was astonished. And of course, I'm filming uh, today a lot with a small camera that I bought which uh, doesn't cost very much, but it is 4K, like your cell phone is normally is 4K. So a very high resolution of, of images. And I use professional sound, and I have done a feature film, the very last film that I shot uh, last year was in Japan, a feature film with Japanese actors in Japanese language. And uh, I was out in the streets, and the camera was smaller than this bottle here. I keep uh, advising young people, uh, do not complain that uh, nobody, Hollywood doesn't give you money. Of course, Hollywood doesn't give you money, and it doesn't <laughs> give you money either. <laughs> Which is totally okay, but uh, you can uh, just take initiative and, and start your own film. And you can edit the film on your laptop. And you can, uh, you, you do not have to wait for, for a year and a half until uh, you are at a festival or you find a distributor. You can put it on the internet, on YouTube, or on your own website, or your own whatever. Can you publish a whole film on, um, on Facebook, for example, or is it only for photos? I film short videos, yes, but films can are you, not sure. Can you show it? Because I do not use uh, uh, Twitter or Facebook or any. Uh, can I, could I open a Facebook account and publish an entire two hour film on, on Facebook? I don't know. Possible? You would know. Yes or no? It's possible, but no one does it. Is, is it possible? Yes, but nobody does it. Uh, okay, yeah, because nobody has a patient. To look at more than yeah. And the crazy cat videos. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm mentioning the crazy cat videos because I love them. <laughs> when, when I'm really down, when everything went wrong during the day, everything uh, was a disaster. I, I go online on 
on the internet and I look for crazy cats. <laughs> gives me immediately a better day. <laughs> but it's mostly the cats that are so wonderful. It's, of course, some people cover it with their cell phones. But uh, it's the cats that give you all of a sudden a reconfirmation that the world is not as crazy as they can be. <laughs> And speaking about your interest in, in film, oh, not only videos of cats, uh, <laughs> you said earlier today that you uh, watch like four or five films um, in a year. And, and how do you choose what you're going to watch? Uh, well, sometimes I see a little boy at Telluride Film Festival, which is a small festival in the mountains of Colorado, and it has no invitations. It has no red carpet, it has no media, there's no press there, uh, it has no competition, it's just like a family reunion of the best films. So sometimes I see a little more when I'm in Telluride. Um, but otherwise, um, I listen to friends and if somebody comes, there is a film you must see. When I started to make films, <clears throat> there were only four or five film festivals come, Venice, Berlin, Locarno, a very few. Today it's over 4,000. And the number of real, real good films is still only four or five. I can see on the entire film, it's as if I see it on the screen. And <clears throat> this is why I, I write the screenplay very quickly, because uh, I, I listen, what are they saying? I, I, it's like copying. It's copying a text of 100 pages. And I write a screenplay normally not longer than five days. And colleagues of mine in the film industry write a year and a half. I've never spent more. Akere, la ira de Dios, o de Deus, I wrote in two and a half days. Because I saw the film, and I, I was, uh, I was with my football team uh, in a bus. We were playing in a foreign country in Italy, and we brought as as a present for the opposing teams, we brought two Bavarian barrels of Bavarian beer, huge <laughs> barrels. So we were driving in the in the bus. And after 100 kilometers, our goalkeeper said we should open one and taste if it's okay. <laughs> so we opened one barrel, and within an hour or two, everybody was drunk. <laughs> and I was sitting at that time, there was no laptop, I had a small typewriter on my knees, and I was writing a girl the screenplay. And everybody in the bus got rowdy, they, they chanted obscene songs. Everybody was chanting, and my goalie vomited on my table. <laughs> and I mean, I, I threw it two pages, I, I lost because I threw, them out, I threw them out the window. It was, it was too bad. It's, it's wonderful to travel to another country and you have your whole team with you and, and you play games. It doesn't matter if, if your opponent is way too strong. It does, you try your best. You see, that's that's the that's the beautiful side of it. You and you take the defeat like a man, <laughs> like eleven men, and you just accept it. Yes. But you accept it because you have done your very very best. And it's a little bit like uh, doing a film. Yes, you have made, you have done everything you could put into it, and, and nobody wants to see the film. It has happened to me. Yes, but maybe years later people will see the film and, and then it's fine because you've put everything that you had to give was put into the film. I grew up in a mountain, in a, in a very narrow valley in the mountains in Bavaria, nothing around, no cars, no telephone. We had no running water, so we had to, I had to go with a bucket and fetch water from the, from the well and we had hardly any electricity, no cinema, nothing. I made, I made my first phone call when I was 17. It's unthinkable for, for all of you young people uh, that I made a 
first table phone call when I was 17. Today, the three, four-year-olds have a cell phone already. Um, so the world for me was, was very mysterious and very exciting out there. And I started to travel early, and I was always, always, always curious. Well, there is a question uh, about the people who appear in your films. And uh, they show confidence in you. And, and the person who sent the question wants to know how do you approach and do you select uh, the people who you're going to interview? And do you, do you start to contact by yourself? I'm not, not interviews only, number one. I do not interviews. I, I'm not a journalist. I do not have a catalog of questions. I do conversations mm -hmm. free without knowing exactly where it will take me. And it is not only for documentaries, you should wind it and ask how do I connect to actors in feature films. Let's make the question wider, but I interrupted them. So no, no, but the question is, is really this. How do you approach the people uh, who appear on your films and how do you uh, build this connection with them that it feels natural? I, I can give you a few extreme cases. One well, in feature films, uh, Nicolas Cage, for <laughs> bad lieutenant, bad lieutenant, and I, I always had the feeling that's a person with whom I want to, to make a film. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's a situation where I get some rumors. Uh, Nicolas Cage uh, wants to work with me, and I knew I had to work with him, and there was a project, bad lieutenant. And there was, before we even made contact, there was a conspiracy. He would not sign the contract with the production unless I was a director. And I was not going to sign as director <laughs> if Nicholas Cage was not the leading actor. And I said to, to Nicholas, you know, um, we, um, we will do something where you will be at your best. And that's what I always do with actors. They know they will be at their best. Kinski, at his best, he has made 200 films that are all forgotten. He was always remarkable, but at his best in Fitzcarraldo, Aguirre, Nosferatu, and so on. Uh, Nicolas Cage, the same. So you, you have to have an eye for it. And in documentaries, uh, a very, how shall I say, uh, an, an extreme case would be uh, films that I made on death row. Uh, men and two women actually also who were condemned to death in, uh, um, in the holding cells or on death row in Texas and in Florida. And of course you have only 50 minutes, uh, 45 or 50 minutes you, you are allowed to film. And everything has to be done in this time, so you cannot waste any time. This is why I shoot these things digital, because I do not have to say, oh, let's stop, I have to change the magazine, I have to put a new <coughs> roll of film and you lose continuity. And um, the crime itself was incomprehensible, because it was so nihilistic absolutely and utterly realistic. And uh, as I, you have to do, go in writing with a person, and they have to invite you, yes, uh, I would like to film with you. And I told them, this film that I'm doing is not trying to prove your innocence. You have done that over 10 years with attorneys and support groups and, uh, and all sorts of things. This is for looking deep into the soul of human beings. And I think it's the it's center of, of, of all this. You have to know the heart of men. You have to know the heart of men. Then you can connect immediately and very deeply. And the selection of, of persons uh, that are beyond the, the man who is executed eight days later, they are various other witnesses and homicide detectives and many other people. And I made a choice that was on target. Not, of, not one of them was ever uh, boring or not right. You, 
and if there were 20 others I could have had on camera, you have to make the right choice. And if you cannot make this right choice, you are not a filmmaker. When you have somebody behind a bulletproof glass and only at arm's length distance, you see there's no more small talk. You know he's dying in eight days. So what do you do?